Hellraiser is a 1987 horror film by the legendary horror author Clive Barker. The film is about this puzzle box called Lemon Configuration, which, when solved, opens the gates to this hellish kind of dimension, and these demonic creatures called Xenobites come and tear your soul apart. This happens to the character Frank, but later his brother moves to his old house. After a few drops of brotherly blood, Frank is brought back from there, but needs to eat humans to regenerate his body. Frank's brother's wife, Julia, finds out about this and decides to help by luring men to her house and letting Frank to eat them, due to her and Frank's secret sexual affairs that they had after she married Frank's brother. I mean, what a great concept for a horror film. Two, co two characters coming together and helping each other just to have sex with each other one last time. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but it, but the film plays everything straight, and it works! It somehow works! And that's the key element why I love this film. It is so ridiculous, and it does something super different than other, other horror films from the 80s did, but it still works as a great horror film to study and discuss about. This film is a perfect example of a good debut film. Clearly, Clive Barker had a vision, and although the film had only about $1 million budget, which is a fairly little for this type of effect-heavy film, he managed to pull off a lot of cool stuff in here. The blood and carnage just makes the audience cringe. No, not in the way how internet has defined that word, in the way that makes the audience feel uncomfortable. And although all this is played for shock value, it is still impressive what they managed to pull off. Also, the filmmaking here, like the camera work and such, is really well done. You could assume that this film would contain some amateurish filmmaking choices because it was Clive Barker's first feature film, but no, some of the effects might look a bit dated, but overall, the look and feel seems to be really professional. I mean, notice how every time Frank is about to feast on other man's flesh, the camera pans or cuts away to Julia, and we follow her quests to get the men to her house. Notice how, at first, she feels uncomfortable, but changes to determined after a while of doing this. It's fascinatingly well done, and what makes it even better is the fact that halfway through the film, Julia turns from the protagonist to antagonist when Frank's brother's daughter, Kirsty starts to find out what is going on. From that point on, Kirsty is our main character, and Julia steps aside. Although I like this idea from a storytelling point of view, I have to point out one of my personal problems with the whole film. Kirsty is not an interesting character. Now, I'm not saying that Ashley Lawrence is a bad actor. Actually, she makes a solid job as Kirsty, but my problem here is the fact that she isn't as interesting as Julia. Julia seems to be this really complex and interesting character, whose actions seem to be justified by her motives. She isn't just a cheating wife. She isn't just a woman in danger. She seems to measure all of her choices and probably think through how, in the end, she could get to bed with Frank. I mean, look at her face in this shot. This is her after the first murder, and without any words, she seems to come to the conclusion that this is messed up, but she has to keep doing this for Frank. What is Kirsty then? A screaming teenage girl. I don't hate her, but I don't like her either. Now putting that aside, I still think this is one of the greatest horror films of all time. Or at least, it's one of my favorites. Because although I'm not scared by it, I'm still fascinated by the characters, the filmmaking choices, the concept and the st story itself, and how it borrows elements from Lovecraftian horror, while the themes that the film decides to explore are really down to earth. You know, like, how far can some people go to please their own fantasies, or like, like, you know, how our actions have consequences. Take Frank, for instance. He went out trying to seek new ways to pleasure himself. 
and ended up finding the puzzle box. Now he's a fleshy looking cannibal because of his actions. W well, what about Julia? Well, because she had sex with Frank and wants to have it once again, she ends up helping Frank by murdering innocent men. Also, Christy too opens the puzzle box, but uh, doesn't want to take responsibility of her actions, even though she's doomed to be tortured by the Cenobites. As you can tell, these characters, their actions have consequences. Now, I didn't bother to watch the rest of the Hellraiser sequels, but I did watch the second Hellraiser movie to expand my knowledge on Hellraiser lore. The film starts from where the first film was left. Now we follow Kirsty as the main character who's in a mental institution. She thinks that her father is now in the hellless dimension and wants to bring him back. There's also this mad doctor who regenerates Julia out of the bed where she was laid on in the last film when she died and puts this young kid to solve the puzzle box. After that we get to see what the dimension really looks like. We also get to witness the god slash Satan that the Cenobites worship, Leviathan, and we get to see how Penhead, the name that Clyde Barker himself hates, became a Cenobite. The second Hellraiser movie doesn't work as its own standalone film because it's way too connected to the first film and feel feels like it's way juicier than it. But watching these films back to back made me feel like they should have been a one big three hour long horror fantasy epic. Now the effects in the second film might look cheaper than in the first film, uh, but that is because of the production's near bankruptcy and Clyde Barker's maybe too ambitious screenplay. So the fact that this film even got made is a miracle, and at least it's a satisfying ending for the whole series. If they ended it there. Alright, let's discuss about the movie's mythology and call this next segment The World of Hellraiser. The first film keeps it as a mystery what the world beyond the puzzle box is, and I like that. The simplicity of a box that will open the door to another dimension is just fascinating. The film doesn't find it necessary to explain in detail why is all this madness happening. Because it is just simple. There are unexplainable forces beyond us and we cannot do jack shit about it. The second film just adds to this by leaving us with more questions than answers. Yes, it shows the world where the Cenobites come from and that they were people before, but does it really explain everything else what is going on? The answers that the film gives to the audience makes them question more things about how this world actually works. And you know what? I love it. The fact that anything can happen in this universe because there aren't really any established rules other than solving the box just makes it more interesting to me. That is why I love Lovecraftian horror. The fact that there are powers beyond us and that anything can happen because nobody can really explain what is going on is just pure heroin for me. I mean, who needs drugs when you can easily be fascinated by the worlds influenced by H.P. Lovecraft? I had no clue where I was going for when I started to work on with this video. Yo guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, leave, leave a like, and if you want to see more content like this, please consider to subscribe. L leave a comment down below what you think about what do you think about Hellraiser? Uh, did you like it? And also, you can su suggest movies that I could consider discussing about. Um, yeah, stay safe, and we'll tear your soul apart.